Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In this second video in our Power Apps Portal series, we're going to create our first Power Apps Portal that will display data with an entity list. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. So in our previous video, we created a data verse. And if you want to play along with this example from start to finish, make sure you watch that video first. You'll find the description for that in the description of this video, a link back to that previous, that previous uh, video. So what we did in that last video is we went over to solutions and we created a solution called Pragmatic University with two tables and then a, a drop-down box. Really simple. And it's for, for creating a financial aid application for our students. So for this example, we're gonna go back to make.powerapps.com and we're gonna create a entity list to display all the students' information. So to do that, we'll go over and we'll select, uh, you'll see right here we have on the home ribbon, uh, we've got our university created. Now I did that by going to portal from blank. So if you haven't already done that, this takes about 30 to 60 minutes to create this. You simply click the button not 30 to 60 minutes from your side, but 30 to 60 minutes from Microsoft. You can only have one per environment. Now, inside that, that, that portal, though, you can create multiple websites. But in our case, I have a fresh new environment here called Brian's Environment. I gave it a name of some sort. I gave it a URL of some sort. And then I hit Create. Now, I'm not going to do that right now since we already have done that. But once I hit Create, you get an email saying, Portal's creating. And then you get an email saying, Portal has created. So about 30 to 60 minutes or so is what it takes to, to do that, the first time at least. So in this case, what we want to do is two apps that it creates. One app it creates is called Portal Management. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that app. There we go. And it's opening up in the background right here. Okay, and you can see the, the starter portal, portal it created. Additionally, if you want to edit the Power App Portal, which looks like this, not bad for a starting for a starting block of application. I'm going to go ahead and select the little dot, dot, dot next to my Pragmatic University, and I'll hit Edit. So when I do that, it's going to open up the editor necessary to change this website, to create new pages, and to do all that. Again, uh, in this case, it's similar to WordPress editor, but not nearly as nice. All right, so we want to go ahead and create our first page. Now, in this series, we're going to walk through creating an empty list, Next video, securing it. Then we'll create a uh, form to actually enter the data. Then we're going to go through and prettify it and do all those kind of works next. Is that a word? Eh, we'll make it a word. word. All right, so let's hit new page in the top left and we're going to create our first page to display the applications. Now we haven't received any applications yet, so it'll be blank, but we'll hit uh, blank page. Okay. And it takes a few seconds to spin this up, maybe a minute or so for in your case also. And let's call this page on the right side, let's call this um, uh, Student Aid Applications. There we go. Okay. And then for the partial URL, make sure that, that preview is now done. Uh, uh, let, let, I'm going to call this actually Financial Aid. Financial Aid Applications. Oh, and if I can spell, there we go. That's a little less confusing now. And then for our partial URL, we'll type in Financial Aid Applications. All right, so this will be a listing of applications that you might have. Now check this out. See where it says save down here? I'm gonna click in the white area, watch that saved icon there. It goes from saved to saving, then back to saved. That's how you have to save an application, uh, our Power App portal. You just make your change, click over, click somewhere in a white area, and it will, if something's changed, it will change at that point. Now you'll find you'll spend only about half your time in this editor here. You're gonna spend the majority of your time in this editor right here, which we'll come back to in a moment. Okay. So for our first piece, I don't like this template per se, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the template we're using right here on the right from default studio template to page with title. And by doing that, I get a little better feel. It's gonna have a title up top here and it will have a uh, breadcrumbs to find back, get back to the home page. The next step is I want to drop in our list right here. So make sure you select this column. So it should be kind of uh, kind of purple highlight after you do that. You can select any of these areas, and whatever I whatever I insert up top will drop into that area. But in my case, I'm going to select the column, so it kind of boxed to that point. And then I'll go to components. You'll find components up in your top left. And I want to go ahead and just create new sections, new you know, based on the number of columns you have. I'm going to go ahead and create, in my case, a list. The list is how you're going to show data out of the dataverse 
on this Power App portal. So let's select list and it dropped the list in. All right, let me get rid of my face here so you can see the whole thing here. And when I select this list, we're going to give it a, a good name. We'll call this just financial aid applications. There we go. We'll stick with that. The table we want to point to is called, I think it's called student aid applications. Okay, there it is, student aid application. There we go. And what action, what view do you want to use? We created this view in our first, in our first uh, session that we did in our last video. So I'll go ahead and select that. Next, you'll see what do you want to turn on? Do you want to allow them to create new records? Do you want to allow them to view records? We're going to do this in our next video. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave this as is for the time being. I will turn on delete just so you can kind of see that also. Next, we'll go to settings and how many records do you want to show per page? I'll do 25. And then you can also get the ability for people to search on it. And later, we're going to turn on table permissions to where you can only see your own record. We're not quite ready for that yet, so we'll leave that alone for the time being. But that's how you do row-level permissions. Okay. Additionally, though, when I select the page, notice it went from saved to saving to saved again. I only want you to see um, this page if you're signed in. So I'm going to go to permissions on the page. So I set the white area to see the page. And then go to permissions. And I'm going to say it's not available to everybody, but instead only authenticated users. So I'll hit select role and I'll select authenticated users. Now we can also create our own roles that we use here as well. So we could create one called students and one for parents and one for teachers. And each of those are allowed to see different pages also. But in our case, we're going to keep this very simple. And if you're authenticated, you can see it. If you're not authenticated, you can't see it. So once we've done that, we'll click, click, click on the white area, save, saving is saved. Notice we got a little error right now. Let's see what's going on here. It looks, and this happens oftentimes in Power Apps portals where it kind of loses itself. I want to say use existing. Do I have that one here? I do have that one here. So also I said use existing, so it did keep it, but for some reason it says it's misconfigured. It looks fine to me. So it says, uh, uh, there it goes. Just took a second to kind of rethink. So I pointed it to the uh, existing financial aid application, which we created, and there's our list. We have a search bar. We're going to have a delete bar later. Let's go ahead and see how this looks now. All right, to test drive this, I'm going to hit the browse website up top here. Okay, and once I hit browse website, it's going to purge the cache, reload the cache, and allow us to see the data at this point. Okay, so in a few moments here, we're going to go jump to this page called Financial Aid Applications. Now, the first thing it's going to notice, though, is I'm not signed in. So it's going to ask me to sign in at this point and go back. But I don't have a login, so I need to do something about that, right? Now, you'll see right now I'm using Azure AD. We can turn on and off that. Now, let's kind of take a quick detour and see how we can do all those kind of things. So back at this uh, home page here at make.powerapps, so you don't have to do this. I just want to show you where this is at in case you have that question. I'm going to select um, uh, over here where it says uh, Pragmatic Works University. I'll select it. I'll then go to Details. And then we'll see our login providers right here. And we can always add more by just pointing to which provider we want to use, like Microsoft, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want to do. And then you walk through a few wizard to kind of create that. Okay, so they're, they're improving this all the time. But if you want to turn off certain things, you just select it. Like you don't want AD because these, these, these parents won't be in AD. You can select it, hit the little gearbox, and turn it on and off based on that. You can also do this in the other screen we had open before. All right, so I'm going to choose, uh, in my case, um, I'll just choose Azure AD to see what happens here. So I'll go ahead and select it. There we go. It's going to say, do you want to allow this, this website to see Azure AD? Because I'm an admin, I'll, I'll accept here for my account. There we go. And now it's going to link my account. This is one way of doing it. So we were doing more of the, the third part, the, 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 the authentication provider for Azure AD. You'll see because I'm signed in now, I get the whole sign out screen here up top. And we can go through and specify my all my information right here. Do I how do I want to how do I want to see this? Because I'm an admin, I'm seeing this right here on the right. Also, your your users are not going to see that unless they're in the admin role. You can also go through and specify your your preferred language right here if you do have multiple languages. And you can add in your Facebook account and those kind of things to sign in instead with that if the administrator allows it. All right. So in my case, I think I'm done. Almost just for for a whim here, I'm going to go ahead and type in. Um, AD, so I can kind of keep track of the logins here. Okay. And then I'll hit update. So this account will be Brian Knight AD, just so I can kind of keep track of this is my Azure directory one. Now look what happened. It routed me back over to our list. 
or we don't have any applications yet. But we'll fix that in our next one, don't worry. And I can search for them uh, in a moment. You'll also be able to delete those if you have permissions. All right. So our next video, we're going to create an application and see it here and make sure we can lock it down to only the user that's allowed to see it. All right. So hope to see you in our next video where we're going to lock it down and also add new applications on the back office side. All right. See you soon.